AITA for not making my son apologize to my mill after an argument? I am not oop. Oop is you, mad dad throw away 8630. He originally posted in R, A I T A. I fixed the title per his edit at the bottom of the first post. Trigger warnings. Food tampering. Religious bigotry. Less than. Mood spoiler. Hopeful for the nuclear family unit. Less than. Original post. November 25th. 2022. I. M41. Am married to my wife. F37. I have two kids from my previous marriage. B15. G13. I am Jewish. As was my first wife before she passed. My current wife is not. We have no kids together. My kids have always got along with their stepmom and her family fairly well. Until recently. Thanksgiving with my wife's family is a huge affair. And it's the only chance a lot of the family has to see each other during the year. My kids and I do not eat pork. But there are always options for us or we bring something we specifically can eat. Like vegetarian lasagna. Wednesday night I had dinner with my wife's parents at their place. I should mention that my wife is not very personally religious although she attends services with her parents monthly. My pill are very, very conservative style evangelicals. We mostly don't talk about our religious difference although I once had to stop my mill from encouraging my daughter to be baptized. Everything was fine until the end of the meal when my mill crossed her arms and said, See. We told you nothing bad would happen. I asked her what she meant. My mill said she had mixed bacon into one of the dishes. A casserole. To prove a point to us. I tried to ask very calmly why she would do something like that. My mill said it was to show that there was no point in following the Old Testament law anymore. I asked my Phil if he knew what she had done and he said yes. He seemed more uncomfortable but he talked a bit about how Christ came to free us from the Jewish law and that they wanted to show us how we could be freed from the law as well. He has worked as a pastor in the past. By this time my daughter was crying and left the room. My wife got up and followed her. My son has been growing more observant as he gets older. He is more observant than me or my daughter. He flipped out. He screamed at my pill that they were terrible people. Called my mill some very nasty names. And said he never wanted to come back. My Phil started shouting back and my mill started crying. I told my kids to get in the car and then told my wife we were leaving. She told me she would stay at her parents so she could help with Thanksgiving prep the next morning. I was texting with my wife on TG and she told me my son is not welcome to come until he apologizes. For the things he called my mill. I told her that's ridiculous but she is siding with her parents. I told my kids we would not be attending Thanksgiving. Instead we ordered Chinese and watched movies. My son was fine with it but I could tell my daughter was down. She missed out on seeing a lot of friends she has in my wife's family. My wife is still at her parents as of now. I should mention that I too am very angry at what happened and what I feel is the disrespect shown. To me and especially my kids. I am torn on whether to encourage my son to apologize contingent on a mutual apology to us. AITA? Edit 1. The title says my son and his mill. I meant my mill. His step-grandmother. Update post. November 26, 2022. In comments. Wow. I'm overwhelmed by the outpouring of support. Thanks everyone. When I wrote this post. I was still numb and paralyzed. I didn't realize how much. Looking back. I agree with many of the commenters and wish I had had the presence of mind to communicate how heinous and violating my mill and fill were in the heat of the moment. Instantly, my wife came back home a few hours after the post when I said she was taking her parents' side. It was about my son apologizing for calling my mill the B-word and C-word. She claims she had no idea what they planned to do and spent most of the holiday fighting with her. 
parents. On reflection though, I am very disappointed in her reaction as well as my own. After some discussion we will be taking some further steps. My son will be making no apologies for anything. My Mill and Phil are not welcome in my home nor will we be going to theirs. All contact with my kids is cut off. I have contacted my rabbi and lawyers about how best to move forward. As to my marriage, we will be attending couples counseling. My wife has been a rock and a loving stepmother for our four-year marriage. And she has particularly bonded with my daughter. I don't know if our marriage can survive this though. Because my trust has broken. My son especially has had his trust broken. And my relationship with my pill is irrevocably broken. I will pursue a restraining order if they try to initiate contact with my kids. I have tried to communicate on here calmly without breaking out into how angry and violated we all feel. Thank you to everyone who validated that. Final comment. I have made the decision as a parent to not penalize my son for anything he said in response to being violated and assaulted by my pill. I am very proud of him and for the way he stood up for the dignity of both himself and his sister. He is a true mensch. Why is it so hard for some people to respect other people's choices when it doesn't impact or affect them in any way? I identify with OOP needing time for the depth of the violation to sink in. It's like all three of them embodied the fight. Son. Flight. Daughter. And freeze. Dad. Responses. They all knew a terrible thing had happened to them by people they had grown to love. How horrible. The Bible specifically says you can't do that to people following food laws. Phil was a shoddy pastor. As well as a shoddy human being. Okay this is not only gross on a religious level but they could have gotten really sick. They, most likely, had never had pork before and they could be intolerant to it the same way vegetarians get sick if they eat meat after a long time. Even without the physical health aspect, it's wrong and violating and 100% reason for NC but with the physical aspect, it also seems illegal. Like purposely feeding someone something they're allergic to. I don't care what reason someone has for a dietary restriction allergies. Religion. Health. General dislike you respect it. Seriously. I'm a non-practicing Muslim but still don't eat any pork etc. My kids and I would be horrified. Why force someone to eat something they don't want to? I wouldn't put meat in my vegan friends' foods. Yeah nothing bad would happen except of course ruining your daughter's marriage and teaching her partner and kids that their religious beliefs aren't worth respecting because Jesus freed them. Seems like the B word and the C word were an appropriate response in the circumstances. I'm pretty sure secretly feeding pork to people who don't eat it for religious reasons is a hate crime. Oh no. Actions have consequences. This is just anti-Semitism. I'd let the daughter contact all her friends in the family and tell what happened. Narcissism and evangelicals are two peas in a pod face vomiting. I can't believe that you'd be mad and hurt that we violated your family like that. It was just a joke to prove a point and now you've taken it too far. In all my YRS there has only been one group of people who have an unbearable, uncontrollable need to override other people's beliefs, whether they be religious or cultural, and insist that their way is better than everyone else's. What's wrong with these people? But everyone else is the problem right? Face with rolling eyes. From what I understand of religious doctrine around food, intent is incredibly important so they are completely clear in the sin department. It's just the horrible in-laws that'll have to justify their actions to St. Peter at the gates. Which is somewhat ironic in the grand scheme of things. 
there's that religious freedom everyone talks about. Woman facepalming light skin tone honestly. This betrayal of trust couldn't be fixed with an apology. I hope Boop and his children don't accept if one ever comes. Not that I think one would. I can't believe they came up with the idea and thought it was a good one. Can't believe the wife stayed either. Oh. My. Lanta. I'm clutching my figurative pearls at the audacity of the grandparents in this situation. I have Jewish in-laws who really only keep kosher on holidays. To each their own and I'm an awful Catholic so not one to throw stones. You bet I beat my butt off trying to find a good kosher wine when we got together for my our first Seder. I cannot fathom putting a pork product in an observant Jewish person's food. It's tantamount to poisoning their soul? Would these evangelical grandparents serve a beef patty to an observant Hindu guest in their home? How about pushing a craft cocktail or ant whomever's flammable rum balls onto a recovering alcoholic? Oh! Or serve a tasting menus of mushroom dishes to someone with severe allergies? Yay up! It takes a minute to process when someone you have grown to love and implicitly trust tries to poison you and your kiddos. Fight. Flight. Freeze were all legit reactions in the moment. I don't know what to say about your wife staying but call me a hopeless romantic. I believe she spent the time calling her folks out on what a douche move it was. She may not know or have accepted the full gravity of what her folks purposefully did to you all. I'm glad it sounds like you're giving therapy a shot. I hope it works out but nothing is a guarantee. Also definitely lawyer up for the assault and protection orders. Buy that boy a motorbike or PlayStation. I'm pretty sure this is considered assault, not a lawyer, just remember watching a legal eagle video. This is absolutely horrendous. I don't think fundamentalists, Karens and Kens, entitled Oz understand that it's not just a religious violation but in some cases it's a health violation. I grew up not eating pork as well because of my faith. Although, I strayed for a while in my teenage and college years. I literally can't eat it anymore. I get sick each time I try eating pork and I found out through my physicals and some minor research that it's because we are so conditioned from our youth on refraining from certain diets. It can have major problems on our overall health. I've seen similar issues with some of my friends who are of the Hindu faith, who literally can't eat meat because they always grew up vegetarian. The moment they dabbled in it, they had some problems afterwards. I know there might be psychological reasons behind getting sick but it's clearly physically problematic as well. I have a friend who vacations in a southern state frequently. She has a group of friend acquaintances down there. One day, she was having dinner with a bunch of them when one of the ladies says something like, you are going to love this church. It's so beautiful, etc. We can go together, etc. BTW. They have known each other for at Leah's Mount a decade. My friend then said, we are Jewish, but it sounds like a nice place. She's always kind and respectful of others. Always. This woman says, oh, you are? Well you should come anyway and I will pray for you because you are going to hell. Not in a, go to hell, way, but in a serious and concerned voice. My friend just said, thank you, again. She's respectful to others but she was super insulted. The MIL's smug self-satisfaction is what made me vomit the most I'm glad the sun made her cry. And I hope she cries herself to sleep for a very long time over this. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Heracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.